What's up Mega Nation? I'm Matt and today we've got another epic video for you. I sat down with writer Max Brooks to chat all about his new book Minecraft the Mountain and of course about Minecraft itself, how he got playing, what kind of stuff he likes to build and what mobs he thinks are the best. Before we get into the interview, remember to hit that like button and of course smash the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future epic videos. But let's not waste any more time, let's jump straight in. How did you get into the game? My little boy, he was little back then, he just turned 16 today. Uh, back then a family friend told us about it. They came to visit and they said, oh, do you play Minecraft? Our little boy Jack plays Minecraft. And they're like, no, I don't know, I've never heard of it. We downloaded it and I started playing with my son and I realized this is a lot more than just a game. Mm. Oh, wow. Uh, I realized that like, that there were a lot of life lessons here. And the more I played it with him, the more I realized that this has the potential to be the greatest education tool since the printing press. Mm, yeah. So when I was asked, like, do you have, do you have an idea for a Minecraft novel? I was like, uh, yeah, do I ever? I think I already know the answer to this question, but do you prefer creative or survival? Oh, always. Well, I, I think creative is good as an introduction. Mm. You know, get little kids into it and it's sort of fun because you don't want to load them down initially with how difficult it can be because that'll turn them off. So you want to hook sure. them on the love first and then, and then go to survival, uh, which by the way, I think that that is something that a lot of teachers miss about reading. You know, a lot of teachers came to teaching because they naturally love reading and they don't understand that for a lot of us, even people who don't have dyslexia, because I'm just crushed by it. But most people reading, you have to A, want to read something and B, you have to practice. And the way to do that is to love it, which is another reason I thought Minecraft books, what a great idea. When you started writing the, when you started writing The Mountain, um, did you build anything in game? Uh, to sort of help you get a sense of yes. the story? It was already done. Uh, I mean, when I, when I say in, the, in both books, the following is based on true events, I'm not being cheeky. I mean, I really, I really built everything. Oh, nice. uh, I, my only regret is that the, uh, the actual mountain that I have built is on an old computer that, that can't be upgraded uh, uh -huh. because it was so many years ago, the software is so out of date, we can't even find it anymore. Uh, but yeah, I built that mountain. I built Summer's Mountain and I, bu I built uh, the ice cube that she builds in the nether, that, uh, which I, we can still access. Uh, but yeah, no, everything. Because also there's no substitute for, for living. You know, they say write what you know. Because when you write what you know, you never know what's going to happen. If I had just studied Minecraft, say, maybe watched a few YouTube videos, read a few books about it, whatever, listened to a few interviews, it, it, there's, no, there's no comparison to actually playing the game mm. and seeing the randomness and, and the random discoveries. I think I have a moment in the, the island where my character has his last arrow, creeper's coming, shoots the arrow, a bat happens to fly in between and takes the arrow. That really happened. Oh, wow. That's some timing there <laughs> well and the, and i think one of the greatest lessons minecraft has to teach happened to me twice twice which is when the world changes you have to change with it because when i was writing the island i had it down like i know how to play this game and then one day i woke up and i started playing again i'm like oh my god they've changed everything but what a, and the same thing with the mountain i had actually written acts one and two of the mountain and as I was writing act three, suddenly they changed the nether completely. Mm. But instead of having a tantrum, I thought this is the greatest tool that any of us can learn because you know, a couple, a generation ago, change was slow. Like you could do the same job for 20 years, but now the world is changing so quickly and you develop a skill set like what you're doing right now and the technology changes or the economics change. And suddenly like you need to reinvent yourself like that. And that's exactly what Minecraft can teach you. You know, I learned how to be scared from Minecraft because it can be one of the scariest, it's not, you know, a, it can be a survival horror game when you're in a cave somewhere and you hear a, yeah. you know, that gurgling in the background. You, you oh. capture that beautifully in the first chapter of, um, of the mountain where the, 
you know, towards the end of the first chapter, he, he hears a, the, the protagonist hears a familiar gurgling in the background. And I just hear that noise in my head, like I've been conditioned to hear it. It's, uh, that that's, why, that's why I love survival. Minecraft teaches you a wonderful lesson that when the sun comes down, uh, you have to take care of yourself. And it doesn't mean you have to be violent. You know, you can you can lock yourself away or whatnot. But you have to understand how to take care of yourself. You need survival skills in this life. You can't just expect the world to love you like your parents love you. And I think that's a great lesson that Minecraft teaches you. Because I remember the first time I played. You know, I was wandering around. I thought it was the Garden of Eden. I think I was in, a, in the jungle. And then the, the sun came down and it was like, yeah. what the hell was that? Within the game, obviously, you know, it's infinite, the possibility within Minecraft. You, the, the world is infinite. There's a whole, a whole world of uh, things you can craft. Uh, what's your go-to sort of weapon when you're heading to the nether or you're, you're going out for um, some ex exploration up a mountain, for example? You know, I think, I think the right tool for the right job mm. is, is critical. Uh, I think, like, if I'm in the, if I'm in the nether, I think a bow or some sort of projectile weapon mm. is the most yeah. important because you need because of blazes and because of uh, ghasts, right? You you need you need to be able to get them before they can get you. It's a quick draw, and so I need projectile weapons as opposed to if let's say that I discover an abandoned mine shaft, uh, I will be acquiring so many resources that I need to economize. Uh, so a, an axe, I think, is the best mm. because even though a sword might be good for collecting uh, cobwebs, I think an axe is great because it's a weapon, but you can then also hollow out all the wooden supports from the mine shaft, mm. which is building materials and also fuel uh, so that we don't have to carry an axe and a sword. So sure. I, I think it's important. When you open up a brand new world, you're plonked in the middle of the middle of nowhere with nothing to your name. Is that where you start? Do you do you think yeah. right, I need a I need a house first before anything else? So you're you're thinking about those materials. The first thing I do, I like to get plunked down into the most hostile environments. And so I'm always thinking about my most precious and finite resource, which is time. Mm. Because I'm I, I start starving the moment I'm there. And I know that every step I take, everything I do. I'm burning calories. So, and then I understand that the sun is gonna set and I'm gonna be trapped in darkness to which half of my day is going to be useless. So, okay, what do I need to have? What do I need to get? Night is coming, what do I need? First priority is safety. Monsters are gonna come out. Uh, second priority is gonna be light if I can get it. So that way I can use the night to keep working. I can borrow underground and I can keep working while it's night mm. and some source of food if I can get it. Sure. So if I can combine those, like let's say I spawn on an island, now they have seaweed, gee, thanks, uh, which they didn't at the beginning, but now they have seaweed, I can harvest the seaweed, bring it underground with me with some wood that I've harvested. And so the seaweed can be cooking, providing me with not just food, but also light before yeah. I find any coal. With, uh, obviously you've written books about uh, zombies, uh, the book about zombies, I think, uh, or the books about zombies, I should say. And, um, and what, like I said, uh, my favorite book of last year, uh, a fantastic novel about Bigfoot um, or, or big feet, whatever the plural is, Sas yeah. Sasqua Sasquatch. I say Sasquatch creatures, I think that's Sasquatch just creatures, yeah. Um, what sort of classic uh, monster that isn't already in Minecraft, uh, would you like to see come to the game in some form? I don't know about monsters, but I, I think as far as, uh, I think uh, sharks should be important. You could just, you could modify the AI of the dolphin to be sharks, because that was, that was very important for human evolution, was we, we learned that the ocean is not always a safe place. You know, what I think is what they've done wonderfully now is to make the oceans viable living resources, mm. right? That you can harvest, which is what our ancestors did. Our ancestors, a lot of them lived on the coast. I mean, right where I am in Southern California, the Chumash Indians lived right here and they harvested shellfish and fish and they, you could actually see the farther out they went, they became masters of naval technology because the farther out they went, the bigger the prize was. Mm. But there were also dangers 
And I think having sharks would be important. Also, I think uh, reptiles, the snakes. Mm. I yeah. think different snakes, like there could be constrictors. There could also be uh, poisonous ones. Uh, I think that would be important. And I think also they would taste good. Yeah. Because, you know, as homo sapiens, we always learned to avoid. That's why I think we have a visceral fear of reptiles was there. They were so different and you get bitten, you would die. Do you, so, I mean, as an extension of that, you mentioned uh, all the different sort of worlds, you know, the oceans and the land. Uh, do you have a favorite biome that yes. you're, you're a big fan of? Uh, my favorite biome is by far the taiga because mm. I think it's the hardest. Yeah. It's, it's the t everything that Summer went through in the book I have gone through. And so I love the idea of, of really fighting against nature, even the fact that it's freezing cold. So, mm. and, and that also, the idea of nature being hostile also influences how I, how I build a home. Like if I, if I was on a, just a beautiful sort of semi-temperate area where, where I just know that the land is warm and the sun is warm and the rain is even your friend, then my house is pretty simple. I could just build a little hut and I'd be fine. But building a house in the taiga, you know, first I got to warm it up. So mm. I got to, I got to find some lava, you know, maybe put it under the floor, uh, get some radiant heating. Uh, I want to get clean. So that's where I invented the idea of the hot tub. Mm. And so literally when summer says, you know, the hot tubs are important because not only do they warm up my home, they also put some moisture in because if it's just heat, it's going to dry everything out. Your lips get chapped. And so I love the, the taiga that way because it's the ultimate challenge mm. if, if and resources they, are so, they're so scarce. If you're in, if you are playing in creative or, or, yeah. you're, or you're just, or you're so, so far along in survival that your resources are, are quite abundant by this point. What's sort of the, the, the go-to thing? What's the weirdest thing that you've sort of crafted or built? I think of all, of all the things that, that I have built, I, I put this in, in the mountain. I love the idea of uh, electrifying the house, mm. of, of putting in redstone so I can flick a switch and the lights go on. Uh, and I love the idea of, of putting gravel in front of my windows so I can raise them or lower them in mm. front of my windows. I love the idea of, of the hot shower, I think is, is my crowning achievement, which I put yeah. in the mountain. Because it's not, it wasn't enough just to have a hot tub. It wasn't enough just to have a hot shower. The idea that I could flick it off and be like, oh, perfect. Yeah. And I think I'm, I'm going to get to work on a flush toilet. I think that's an important one. <laughs> so I love, I love putting in all the mod cons, as you people say. Um, I was wondering if you had any suggestions for, any, for anything that we might teach our readers how to craft. Maybe we could yeah. do a, a, a shower. I think the hot shower is perfect because... <laughs> Uh, or it doesn't even have to be a hot shower. If you're in the jungle, right? There's nothing like a cold shower mm. uh, at the end of a, of a sweaty day. But I think the notion of, especially on survival, where you gotta have, you gotta have the, the sticky piston, mm. you know, you gotta have, or have some gravel, or you have two where it just pushes the gravel back and forth. Uh, but either way, you've gotta have your lava, then glass, uh, you could put you could put iron there. I think that would, but I like to be able to see it. Mm. Then you have your water, and then you have your block in between, and then you've got your piston that pushes it back and forth depending on your lever. So uh, I love that. Also, what I love about the taiga is I'm very much aware that when I enter my house and open the door, all the hot air rushes out. So you mm. build a little vestibule. That's always a big yeah. deal. Everything, every house I build on the taiga. Uh, and I have pressure plates. So I come in, the door closes behind me, got my little vestibule there, like an airlock. And then I go into my nice, warm, uh, humid home. When I talk to students, I said, if you're, if you're in a situation where you feel strong and powerful and in control and at the top of your game, it means you're not growing. Hmm. It means you're not being challenged. I said, don't be afraid to be afraid. If, cause if you suddenly find yourself in a situation where you feel scared and small and, and, and dumb and powerless, that's great. That means that you're at the bottom and you're gonna challenge yourself working your way up, you're growing. And that's, it's counterintuitive, 
but it's what I've learned in my life that all every time I feel like a scared kid on his first day of school, those are my best times because that's when I'm at my my strongest, my most agile and uh, my smartest. So there you have it, Mega Nation. Big up to Max for sitting down with us to chat all about the new book. Remember, you can pick up Minecraft The Mountain now. It is available in all good bookstores and all good retailers. I'll drop a link in the description below. And of course, remember to give this video a like and of course, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future Minecraft epicness that we might have. We'll drop a playlist down below for all Mega's Minecraft videos so you can and dive straight in to more Minecraft goodness. And of course, remember to pick up the latest issue of Mega in stores now.